worship at the First United Methodist Church of Maumelle. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm one of the pastors of the church. I'm thankful to get to worship with you today. I pray that the service is a blessing to you and that you are nourished by the presence of the living Christ as we celebrate the Lord together. Sunday of Advent is faithfulness. Here are shared reading from Isaiah 49 verses 13 through 16. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, the Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. We light this candle in honor of God's faithfulness to us. God does not abandon us in the face of our sins, but instead works to put us on the right path again. God is always reaching out for us, inviting us to join him in a life of purpose and joy. That is good news. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us pray. God, we praise you for your awe-inspiring faithfulness. Thank you for offering us second chances and third chances and fourth chances to follow your lead. Give us your strength, we pray, so we might follow you with greater commitment and greater passion. In Jesus' name, amen. Number 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. for our house, 
Uh, we're still getting to serve in a lot of different capacities in the community in ways that make lives better. And we're going to get to do more and more of those things as the, the coming year uh, comes in and as we continue in ministry together. I am thankful to you for your giving. I am grateful that we have continue to support our church so we can be in ministry. And I invite you to join me in your continued support of the congregation. jealous for our attention and God wants to uh, be with us and and live in our lives and be alive in our hearts at all times as a first priority as our great love and it was a little chilling perhaps last week because the scripture passages that talk about God's faithfulness also express God's anger and God's deep frustration when we do not go with that plan it makes his anger easier to understand and easier to accept when we understand this week's message. God is faithful. 
God is ever faithful. God is always ready to be a part of our lives in thick and thin, to help us through the hardest times, to forgive our sins when we come to him, to help us make the right choices in life every day. God is faithful. And what God longs for is to lavish us with his faithful love and with his guidance and with his grace. And so the question and the challenge for us is, will we choose to believe in God's faithfulness? And will we choose to live as people who worship a trustworthy and faithful God? Let's hear a passage from Isaiah 49, beginning with the 15th verse. Isaiah 49 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. There were a lot of questions in the minds of the believers in the days of Isaiah. Their lives were very hard. They were rocked by political conflict. They were impacted by the ungodliness of their leaders. They were besieged by war, by, by enemies around them. There was a lot of setbacks. And in the midst of all of it, they wonder, has God forgotten us? Because so oftentimes, in times of hardship, we wonder if God has forgotten us. It might be that some people in the sound of my voice today are wondering if God has forgotten them. There's a lot of things that can get us to that point. Depression and anxiety can cause us to forget the greatest examples of God's faithfulness in our lives and the ways that we've seen his blessings in the past. If we are experiencing economic hardship or if we're experiencing tension in the workplace, uh, sometimes that might make us feel that God is not with us anymore, even if we're trying to do the right things. And really even this COVID-19 pandemic uh, might make some people wonder, why hasn't God intervened and why hasn't God done what we want God to do? There's a lot of times that hardships can make us think that God is not as much on our side as we previously thought. I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a counselor. I, I do some counseling is appropriate for the level of training that I have as an ordained minister. And from my armchair psychology position, what I can tell you is that I believe nothing makes people question God's faithfulness more than when someone in their lives has let them down that they thought would never let them down. When someone that we believe would always be honest with us has been deceiving us and maybe has been doing that for a long time, it makes us cynical and jaded and makes it hard to trust anyone. When someone that we think matters a great deal in our lives and is going to be a central figure in our lives walks out, uh, that is crushing. And it makes it hard to believe that even God will be dependable. When someone uh, is uh, of a poor character and we believe that they are not, and we see the, the brokenness underneath uh, what we thought was a perfect or near perfect and trustworthy friend, that is earth shattering. When we believe that somebody we love and depend upon has hurt us to the core by being less than faithful. It is hard to remember God's great faithfulness. Yet we want people to be trustworthy because we know something about trustworthiness and we know that because of our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, who makes the sunrise in the morning and set in the evening, he created the world so that these processes would take place. Uh, sun, uh, summer, winter, springtime, all of the seasons that come along, he did that. That's the work of his doing. And in that predictable pattern, summer, fall, Winter, springtime, morning, night, morning again. In those predictable patterns and in so many more, we see the dependability of our God echoed by creation. God will not forget us. God will not abandon us. 
Our names are written on the palms of his hands. So we know God is faithful, and deep within our souls and our hearts, we know something about faithfulness just because God is faithful. And we have that desire to reach a relationship that is faithful because of that innate desire in us to see God's faithfulness. We're built for that. But yet we experience disappointments. And what do we do about that? What do we do about that? When we are hurt and disappointed, it is so easy to become people who are jaded and cynical and who are not willing to risk hurt again. And that might be true in our relationships with other people. It might be true in our relationship with God. So many times when life disappoints us and when people around us disappoint us, it is easy to lash out at God. And maybe even that is the first response for a lot of faithful people who are just having a weak moment. But true beauty comes into our lives when we come to a point that we can look at our sadness, look at our brokenness, look at our disappointments, and still turn to God and just take all of that to Him and vow, life has disappointed me, people have let me down, but there is a God that will never let me down. A mother may abandon her child, but God is with me. A parent might forget their children, but God is with me. This person in my life might have hurt me, but God is with me. There's nothing more profound than that kind of trust. Trusting God despite all of the challenges life has to offer. And when we learn about others who have made that painful journey, it inspires us and it reminds us that moving forward with God is always possible because God is always there. I think about this looking at Matthew chapter 1 at the story of Joseph. And I'm going to invite our reader to read at this time. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25 say, Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name his name Emmanuel. If you have ever been disappointed by someone you thought would never let you down, I want to guarantee you that if you got to sit down over a cup of coffee and some matzah with old Joseph, he would understand. Joseph would know exactly what you're going through. Because Joseph is engaged to be married to the Virgin Mary as we know her. And an angel has told her she's having a child in a means that is scientifically impossible, but possible with God. And Joseph doesn't know how to believe this. He believes the most reasonable thing, which is that Mary has not been true to him. And he does something truly miraculous and truly amazing in the midst of his disappointment and his grief. Instead of turning to bitterness and anger and a thirst for vengeance, he turns to God. And it's awe-inspiring to me. You know, he has so much power in this story. He is a man. He is seen as a good man and blameless. He probably had just enough standing in Nazareth. If he really wanted to get his two pounds of flesh uh, from uh, Mary, if he wanted uh, to pay her back, for the thing that he perceives that she's done and for the ways that he perceives she has betrayed him, uh, he could have done it. He could have told everybody what would have happened. If he did that, they might have stoned her to death. Uh, they certainly, at the very least, would nobody would have married her and she would have raised a child alone because likely the man that had been unfaithful with her in his thinking, likely that man would not have married her either. 
Joseph knows all this. The scripture tells us that he uh, weighs all these things. He thinks about all the different aspects of the situation. He says, I'm going to I'm going to divorce her quietly. I'm going to end the engagement. That's what they called it back then. It was considered a divorce. So he quietly is going to end this engagement as discreetly as he can, avoid any shame for her, and move on with his hurt and his sadness. He is choosing to try to honor God. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. He still wants to be faithful to God. When he resolves to be faithful to God, that's when God really enters the scene for Joseph. God enters the scene for Joseph in a miraculous way. He, he comes to him in the form of an angel. God sends his angel with the message that the child is his child and that Joseph can name this child and can raise this child and the Son of God will live in his home, will be a part of his life every day. A painful situation, powerfully redeemed and made new by God's faithfulness in Jesus Christ. Beloved, we have a lot of reasons in life to become cynical. You've been deeply disappointed by someone. I've been deeply disappointed. We've all been wounded. We could wear our wounds like badges of honor if we want. <laughs> we could become cynical and we could become bitter. Uh, we could become angry and distrusting of everyone around us if we want. We could protect ourselves, use our human level of strength for uh, protecting ourselves from hurt. Or we can choose another path like Joseph. We can choose to trust God where we do not see our next steps. To trust God even though we have been disappointed. We can choose to move forward with God. And when we do that, that is when the Son of God really lives in our hearts and minds just as the Son of God went to live in Joseph's home. We choose obedience, we choose faith, and we find out that God is incredibly faithful. God is incredibly good, God is incredibly steadfast, and he is already steadfast in light of things that are coming our way that are hard and are painful that we have no idea are coming next. God's faithfulness is never ending. It is dependable. It is everlasting. And his love for us, his memory for us, is right in who he is. It, it was Rob Renfro who uh, was one of the writers of our Under Wraps series that we have been uh, in the middle of, and it says at the center of the universe, his writing says at the center of the universe, there is a heart that is faithful and true. At the center of the universe, there is a heart that is faithful and true. That's, that's a beautiful message from this week's Bible study on this subject. At the center of your universe and my universe, there is a heart that is faithful and true. And the question is, will we choose to open up our hearts to that heart, or will we fill ourselves with whatever kind of disillusionment life has to offer for us? The passage today talked about a mother uh, turning on her child. And it reminded me of a dear friend from long ago who now lives in the kingdom of heaven. This sweet woman that I admired so much was full of love. She gave love to everyone around her. She quietly served in her church behind the scenes and cleaned and did things to kind of straighten things up so everybody could have a good time together. She made banners for the church's worship services. She must have made every banner that the church she attended had. She was full of love, gentleness, and quiet servanthood. Her heart was full of trust for God. And she was someone who had been very disappointed by her parents who were not in a place and in a situation to give her the best care. Such a powerful example to me of someone who could have chosen anger, uh, frustration, instead she chose love. And when she left this life, what she left behind her was a legacy of love that pointed to God's faithfulness and future generations in her family that were able to see God's faithfulness and were able themselves 
to be faithful friends and good uh, supporters of the people around them. Life is full of choices. God will not force us to find contentment in him. God will not force us to find joy in him. God will not force us to trust him. But truly, trusting him is the best way. It's the most life-giving way. It's the most joyful way. And if we do, we will not be disappointed. Thanks be to God for being faithful and trustworthy through and through, in all times, in all places. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have spent months trying to focus our hearts on the coming of your holy light into the darkness of our world, on the hope of new life, on the peace of trusting in you, on the joy that fills our hearts when we are in communion with you, and on the love that flows from every pore of our bodies as we open ourselves to your holy presence. Loving God, we celebrate not only the miracle of the Christ child being born in a humble stable so many years ago, but also the miracle that every Christmas the world is transformed and people who may not think about faith very much throughout the year sing out at Christmas about this ancient story. For the gift of hope, for the gift of peace, for the gift of joy and the gift of love as so powerful and beautiful that every heart is captivated by the story and every life is touched by it. And your name is praised and your love is shared and we rejoice. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may continue a holy Christmas. And we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, the babe of Bethlehem, the light of the world, the one who is both our brother and our Lord, praying the words of faith that he taught us so many years ago by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 216, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
all that you do. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.